Hallelujah. Well, stop. Clap your hands. Hallelujah. 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 To be with the people of the Lord in the yes. presence of the Lord. Amen. We bless God today yes. for you that are here. We thank God for his strength. We thank God for his presence. And we thank him for his power. Amen. Good evening. Uh, happy Tuesday. Happy Empowerment Tuesday. Uh, blessings to everyone here. Those of you who are joining us via uh, Periscope and Facebook Live. Amen. God bless you and welcome to Spoken Word Fellowship or Empowerment Tuesday at Spoken Word. Amen. And so listen, we're going to go into the word of the Lord on tonight. Um, I endeavor to teach a little bit and then uh, I want to spend some time praying. The Lord is impressed upon my heart to pray uh, tonight. So we want to spend a little bit of time in prayer. Um, but I just want to share with you a word. It, 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 the Lord gave it to me for the worship event on Sunday that we had. And that just stuck with me. And then I've been stuck with the thankful heart. And uh, so I'm just like, okay, Holy Spirit, which way are we going to go with this uh, on tonight? Amen. But I know that the Lord has a word of encouragement for us. He's got a word of strength for us. Amen. And that's what we're going to receive. Lift your hands and just say, Father, I receive from you, God. Father, I receive from you. Come on, young people, open your mouth. Father, I receive from you. I receive from you. I receive from you. I need to hear you say that. We're in a corporate setting. Father, I receive from you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, I receive from you. Amen. You have to be in a posture to receive. A lot of times we want things from God, but we don't posture ourselves to receive the things from God that we want. Many times the things that we want, we actually need for him to give us. But sometimes we have a posture that shows God this when we need a posture that shows God this. So it's important that we learn how to receive from the Lord, even when the Lord gives you something that you don't want to hear. Mm. Or when it's something that you don't think you want at that time or in that season, you've got to learn how to receive Amen. from the Lord. Wow. Amen. Job said he was looking for him. And he said he looked to his left and he wasn't there. He looked to his right and he wasn't there. And he said, I, I just him. His summation was he knows the way that I take. And so you can't put God in a box uh, to the point where you don't know how to receive from the Lord. Amen. And a lot of times we don't give unto the Lord. What shall I render unto the Lord for all of his benefits towards me? Freely you give freely you receive. Amen. It's reciprocal. So you have to put yourself in a posture and say, Lord, I receive. I receive. Whatever you're saying, whatever you're doing, whatever you're moving, I receive it. Amen. Because yes. God is not going to push himself upon us. Amen. And so that's what we have to have uh, an attitude. We have to have a spirit to receive of the Lord the things that he is doing. Some of us may not have been delivered because we refuse to receive deliverance. Some of us may not have been healed because we refuse to be healed. You may not say, I've never told the Lord not to heal me. I've never told the Lord not to strengthen me, not to bring me out. But if you're asking him to bring you out and you keep running too, you're sending a different message. If you're asking him to heal you or take something from you and you keep going back and picking it up, then you're sending a message. Remember, actions speak louder than words. Amen. And regardless of your actions, God knows your heart. Mm. Jesus told him, man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Amen. You can look healed. You can look holy. You can look righteous. But God knows our hearts. Amen. 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 And so we're going to put this together. We're moving in the spirit on tonight. Let's Amen. go to the 46th Psalm. This is a word that we shared uh, on Sunday. And it's just kind of been in my heart. It's been in my spirit. Uh, dealing with the word refuge, um, with the word refuge, the Lord is our refuge. We're going to talk a few minutes about that on tonight, and I may 
be led to move into thanksgiving. We'll see. Amen. We're just open tonight. Is that all right? Amen. 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 Psalm 46 and 1. And then we're going to go to Psalm 91. Mm -hmm. uh, it says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be moved and the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea? We will not fear. Amen. Amen. The Lord is our refuge and uh, I'm sorry. The Lord is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. The 91st Psalm reads, he that dwelleth in the yes. secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. Watch this. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Listen, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. He, his truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. You will not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that fireth by day. Going to verse 7. And a thousand shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with my eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. And it goes on from there. It says in verse number 12, they shall bear thee up mm -hmm. in their hands, lest, I'm talking about the angels, mm -hmm. lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all your ways. Amen. And so I was thinking about this word refuge and I looked up the word refuge. It was just ringing in my spirit. Refuge, refuge, refuge. What is this, Lord? What are you saying to us about a refuge? Refuge by definition is simply a condition of being safe or sheltered from pursuit, danger, or trouble. A condition of of being safe or sheltered from pursuit, danger, or trouble. And so when we think about a refuge, we have to consider the times where we need refuge. Amen. It's not necessarily a time that we're always running from. It says pursuit, uh, shelter from the pursuit of danger uh, or trouble, right? And so we've got to understand that when life happens, we need to know that there is a place. One psalm, one, in one psalm it says, uh, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And so what that tells me, sometimes we're not in a need of a refuge because the enemy is after us. We're not necessarily in need of a refuge because there is trouble. Sometimes our heart is overwhelmed. Sometimes we are burdened down with life, with ministry, with the work of the Lord that he has called us to. And every now now and again, we need to find a place of peace. We need to find a place to get away from yes. the noise and the clutter of the world. There are times when we need, it's important to have times of solace, times of silence where you hear what the Lord is Come saying. On. A lot of times I deal with what I call helpers burn out. And at times when I walk and I just feel like, Lord, I have nothing left to give. And I just nestle up in the presence of the Lord and I just pour it out on him. That is becoming, that becomes my place of refuge. A lot of times we work in ministry and we're giving and we're pouring and we're giving and we're pouring and it feels as though no one is giving and pouring into us. Well, he says that the Lord is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. And so you've got to understand that God has a design for his children, a way for us always to be renewed and 
and to be revived. The refuge that God provides is a place of strength. Why would you need strength if you're not weary? Why would you need strength if you haven't overworked? Why would you need strength if you have not exerted your strength? The Lord has it already set up. He's got it by design for his sons and for his daughters to be able to have a place to get away. Now, what you've got to be careful with or mindful of is that when you go into the presence of God, he is going to deal with you first and then he will deal with your enemy. He's going to take care of the enemy. He's going to take care of the issue. He's going to take care of the matter that has drained, drained you and driven you to the Lord as a source of refuge. He's going to deal with the issue. At the same time, the Bible declares that in his presence is the fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. And you've got to know that there's something that happens in the presence of God that causes is your life, my life, to be different, to be challenged, to be changed. Remember in Isaiah, the year that King Uzziah died, I also saw the Lord. He was sitting high, his train filled the temple. It goes on and he asks the question, who will go for us? Who shall we send? This is God talking. I believe the Trinity here, who shall we send? Who will go for us? I am a man of unclean lips. I am not worthy, but in the presence of the Lord that he would send cherubs to come with hot coals to touch the mouth of the same one who says, I cannot go. I am unworthy. Jeremiah says, they won't listen to me. I'm a child. They don't have any space for me. They don't have anything for me to be able to say, to be able to share. He says that I put the word in your mouth. That's where we get spoken word from in case you didn't know. That's the revelation. Yes. There is, I have given you a word, and the word that I have given you over in the Gospels, Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. That's spoken word in history right there. That's where our name comes from, a revelation of those two scriptures. And so, you've got to understand that when you deal with God as a place of refuge, when you deal with God in a place of strength, when you go to Him strengthening you for the Lord sometimes requires him breaking you in order to build you, to push you back out. And you've got to be willing to go through sometimes in order to get the strength of the Lord. We're not running to the Lord as refuge just because the enemy, right? When you get to Psalm 91, it says a thousand shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but they shall not come nigh your dwelling. Why is that? That's because I'm under the shadow of the Almighty. I'm under his feathers. He is my shield. He is my buckler. So I don't have to be afraid of the terror by night or the arrow that flies by day. And so what you do, you may run to the Lord coming from an issue, coming from a matter, running from an enemy. But the promise of the refuge of the Lord is that he's going to cover you. If you need to be hidden, he's going to hide you. If you need to be protected, he's going to protect you. If you need to be delivered, He's going yeah, to deliver yeah, you. If yes. you need to be healed, he's going Come to heal now. you. Yeah. And so you've got to understand that when I need refuge, I need to find that place. I'm hearing that song from Stephen Hurd. I need to find a place, yeah. a special secret yeah. place. If I can just get on, to yes. that yes. place, yes. then yes. everything yes. for me is going to work out. Yes. One of the problems that we have is that we don't go to the place at the right time All or right. at the best time. The best time to go to the place is when you recognize you're in trouble. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Come on. If he's a very present help in the time of trouble, when trouble comes, get yes. to the help. Oh, yes. A lot of times our problem yes. is we try to figure it out on our own. We try to come up with resolutions. We go to people. Sometimes we have false 
places of refuge. We go to the wrong people. Sometimes we go to the wrong source. Sometimes we're not looking at the things that God would have us to go to. And sometimes we're going to people and places that are designed to keep us from the refuge of the Lord. And so what happens is we have to learn a discipline in our walk with the Lord. A, to recognize when we need the Lord's uh-huh. refuge and B, to recognize when we need to leave people, places, systems, yes. and things to get into the presence of the Lord. And so what you got to understand is that every place that's a refuge for somebody else is not a refuge necessarily for you. And a lot of times we were saying on Sunday, a lot of times we look to people, we look to things, we look to substances mm-hmm. to fill a void when actually God is saying, hey, my wings are open. My wings are open. There's room for you. Get here. You need strength. You need power. You need a fresh anointing. You need protection. Get here. Come on in the house. Amen. Come in the house. Come in the house. When I was a child, when we were playing outside and the bullies would come and the fights would happen and gunshots would ring, where does everybody go? Everybody goes to the house. And even if you were with some people and they didn't have a safe house, you didn't go to that house. Mm -hmm. You went to a house that you knew would be a safe haven, a safe place of refuge. And so that makes me think when you say get to the house, I know you think church, you think the temple, but the house can be the presence of God. And sometimes you got to know to go into his house presence. You've got to be able to get to where God is. He says in Psalm 91 verse 9, because thou has made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. What is a habitation? It's a house. It's a place where you abide. It's a place where you go to stay. He says, because you've made the Lord uh, your refuge uh, and he is your habitation, it says, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling. And so when you make the Lord your habitation, what you are doing is you're sending a message to people. You're sending a message evil, even to evil spirits that are taunting us. We send a message to them to say, hey, you can't get to me now. It's almost like nah, 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 (laughs) right? I'm with daddy and you can't get to me because you have to get through him. Life has a way of wearing us down. Mm -hmm. Life has a way of taking us through. Whatever your trauma is, whatever your situation is in this season, the word of the Lord comes to encourage you tonight to get to the presence of God. God. Get to the habitation of the Lord. And when you get there, be willing to be dealt with. When you get there, be willing for God to deal with us. Why is that important? That's important because some of the trouble we're running from is trouble that we got ourselves into. And so when you go into the presence of the Lord, when you go into a place of refuge and he begins to deal with you, he begins to deal with you in areas that cause you to have revelation, understanding, knowledge, wisdom on how to deal with some of the things that are causing you to run in the first place. And so sometimes it's a matter of being taught by the power and the anointing of God how to deal with issues and matters. And then there are times where the evil one, the wicked one, the wiles of the devil are upon us and we have to learn how to fight for deliverance. And what we got to do, people of God, is you got to recognize when you need deliverance, A, and what you need deliverance from, B. And when you need deliverance, you need to go into the presence of the Lord. Because what happens is we allow ourselves a lot to be dragged through the mud. We allow ourselves to just be abused by the enemy and we forget that God is on our side. We forget Get that he is gracious, he'll actually try to make you feel inferior to him. He'll try to make you feel like you can't win. He'll try to wear, he will wear you down. 
The mm -hmm. devil will wear you down and get you to the place where you feel I have left the Lord and the Lord doesn't love me. Wow. The Lord is no longer concerned about me. The Bible declares, and I'm going to read it to you. It says that there is therefore now no condemnation, yes. right? You've got to know that when you are walking with the Lord, there is no condemnation. Now, yep, you stumble. Yep, you fail along the way. Yes. But you've got to understand who you're walking with. The yes. Bible declares God to be a long-suffering God. That means that he's a yes. patient Thank God. You. That means that he knows your weaknesses. He Thank knows you. your valley times. He knows your mountain times. He knows when you're dealing with things yes. in your flesh. That's Romans 8. Mm -hmm. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And so now there are times in our walk with the Lord where we return to the law. There are times when we go back to our old ways, our old patterns, our old way of doing things. But what you've got to know is that you've been set free from your old ways if you confess Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. The Bible calls it warfare. The enemy is hot on your trail because he does not want to see you free. He does not want to see you healed. He does not want to see you delivered. Now, when you identify that, you've got to be able to say, Lord, I need deliverance from whatever yes. you need deliverance from. I yes. learned that in counselor training, that the first step to recovery is to admit or to acknowledge that you need to recover. That's the first stage. And when you get to the place and you say, Lord, I need to recover. I need your help. I need your strength. Then you go to him and he will deliver you. Now, I believe 100% in deliverance ministry. Yes. It's yes. the will of God. Yes. It's in the yes. word of God yes. to cast out the yes. devil. Yes. Now, I'm a counselor, and I understand you can't counsel demons. Well. You can't negotiate with them jokers. And sometimes right. you got to take authority, and you yes. got to yes. cast them out. But yes. what's got to happen is you, the person that's been uh, um, indwelled or uh, demonized, yes. has to get to yes. the place to say, you know what? Mm -hmm. I renounce you. Yes. I step yes. up. Yes. I stand up in my place of authority and I declare that I will no longer be under your rule. That's what happened to the man in the tombs. They couldn't get him. They were tying him up in the cemetery. He was breaking chains left and right, moving back and forth. He was checking things out, check the periscope. He was moving and he was just going and going and going. And so Jesus comes on the scene, right? And then he comes, watch this. The man runs and he bows and he begins to worship Jesus. Yeah. Why does he begin to worship? Because the man in himself realized yeah, that I'm demonized and I need to be now. delivered on, and I need on. to be set free. But the demons begin yeah. to speak out. So if all the folks that think demons don't talk, demons do talk. They said, why have you come to torment us? Mm -hmm. It is not our time. Come and on, Jesus on. said, who are you? And he yeah, said, man. we come are on. legion for we be many. Yeah. These demons will talk back. And so what you've got to do is is you've got to be able to relinquish. You've got to be willing to break the tie with the spirit. I don't know how I got here. You've got to be able to break the tie with that demon, with that evil spirit, and stand in the place of authority in your own life that God has given you. Now, God's not going to break your will. No. No. He's not going to break your will. Now. So you got to get to the point. We've got to get to the point where we say, you know what? You got to be like Popeye. Enough <laughs> is enough. I would just say, I stood all right. I can stand right. and right. I can't right. stand no more. Right. Your right. spinach is the word of God. Right. Your spinach on, is now. the Holy yeah. Spirit to give you the fuel and Thank the strength you. that you need to be able to walk in a place on, of now. healing and yes. in a place of yes. deliverance. Yes. That God has designed God for you. Yes. And so that's what you got to do. You got to get to the place to say, God, I need you to deliver me from. Yes. God, I'm having thoughts about this. God, I'm having feelings about this. God, 
I'm having emotions about this. Lord, I don't know why I'm becoming this. This isn't who you call me to be. This isn't who you yeah. designed for me to be. Well, and you've yeah. got to get to that yes. place where you begin to yes. seek God for deliverance. Yes. And sometimes yes. you don't know what the spirit is. And you got to go. You got to say, Lord, this is not me. Yes. This is not who you call me to be. This right. is not my destiny. Yes. This is not your plan for me. Reveal to me what this is I'm dealing with. Yes. And when you reveal it to me, Lord, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to yes. renounce it. And I'm going to ask you to take it away from me. Yes. And so sometimes you don't need to go to the altar. You don't need the deliverance yes. team yes. to get you delivered. Sometimes yes. it's enough to get to the presence of yes. God. Sometimes yes. it's enough to go into the Lord's refuge to get into the shadow of the Almighty. Yes. Because yes. when you get there, he's going to mm -hmm. deal with you. Come yes. on now. Yes. And when the Lord begins to deal with you, you've got to be able to accept the truth. I yes. talked about, I, talk, I had this conversation with a young minister this evening, early in the day, and we were talking about the truth. And what I shared with him was that everyone has to reckon with the truth. Yes. Now, the problem is you can't deny the truth. Come on. Once you know the truth, Come you on. bear witness to the truth, right? Because it is the yes. truth. Yes. Truth is an absolute. You can't change the truth. You, I'm born a man. I can't change it. I know the doctor can change it, but I can't change the fact that I was born a man. If I change my man parts, it doesn't change my heart. It doesn't change my psyche. It doesn't change who God created me to be. And so what you've got to understand is the truth is simply the truth. But what the difference breaker is, is how you respond to the truth. You reckon with the truth. We all do. We reckon with the truth of ourselves. Mm -hmm. We reckon with the truth of people around us. Now, we are more confident and more comfortable about telling somebody else the truth about that. themselves. Right. But when we look in the mirror, when yeah. people start pointing to us the truth yeah. about ourselves, right. then we want to make up excuses. We want to blame people for all this other stuff. Listen, people have to reckon with the truth. And when yeah. you begin to deal with the truth, Jesus said it best. You will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Now the yes. truth is Jesus. We understand that. And when you get Jesus, that's the truth. But the other part of that is you've got to believe that he's Jesus. Hey, you've got yes. to recognize the truth that he is the yes. son hey, of yes. the living yes. God yes. and that hey, he was man. sent here to conquer death, hell, and the yes. grave on yes. your behalf. Yes. Thank you, Lord. So you got to learn to deal with your truth. Yes, yes, Whatever yes. your truth is, that's what you got to deal with. Yes. And so you can take your truth and you can allow your truth to haunt you. Mm -hmm. You can allow your truth to taunt you. Mm -hmm. You can allow your truth to cause you to suffer. Mm -hmm. You can allow your negligence of the truth to cause you to be with out. That's how you get saved. You got to deal with the truth that you're a sinner. Yes. I had to come to grip with the fact that I was a sinner, that I was a wretch undone, that I needed the blood that Jesus shed for me on the cross, and that I needed to recognize that his blood had the power to wash me and cleanse me and make me all over again. And so that's the truth you've got to reckon with. So whatever demon you got, whatever flaws you have, whatever problem you have, you got to first on, admit now. that yeah. I have a problem, Thank that you. I have an issue. And when you do that, now you go into the presence of the Lord and you ask the Holy Spirit yes. to help you. Holy yes. Spirit, yes. reveal yeah. to me. And sometimes yes. you got to trace it back. Yes. Where did this come from? How right. did this enter? Yes. Who knew? You know, what? Um, I can't remember the illness. Uh, I think it was the man in John 9, born blind. I think it was him. They said, who sinned? That he was born blind. Mm -hmm. Was it his father? Was it his mother? Some kind of way they felt this was a curse because of the sin. Some demons enter your life because of sin we right. have committed. Right. Amen. Mm. Amen. So what you got to be able to do is you've got to be able to recognize it like Jesus did. He said, what is your name? Mm -hmm. Who are you? Mm -hmm. Because you can't kick nobody out your house if they're not there. Well, yeah. Come on. If you don't know somebody hiding in your closet, you don't walk in your house talking about somebody in the attic and get out. Who in my attic? You got to find out who's there. What if it's your husband? What if it's your wife? What if it's one of your children? You going to cast them out? So you got to identify what you're dealing with, what you're struggling with. 
What is the trouble? Mm -hmm. What is the issue? Mm -hmm. And then you've got to be able to take Thank it. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. you got to be able to take it head on. Mm -hmm. And when you get into the presence of God, come it on. says that it will not come nigh your dwelling. Yes. When you get into the habitation of God, it says, no evil will befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh mm -hmm. your dwelling. He will Thank give you. his angels Thank charge you. over you Thank to you. keep you in all your mm -hmm. ways. They Thank shall you. bear you up uh, in their hands, lest you fall or dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion mm -hmm. and the adder. I believe that's a snake. Mm -hmm. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under your feet. Why? Because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. Now this is the Lord speaking. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. Watch this. And honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. In other words, God says because you set your love on me. He says, don't set your affection on things in the earth. Set your affection on things above. Your treasures should be on things in higher places, yes. in heavenly places. Don't put yes. it down here where, where moth and, and things come to cause it to decay. And so it says, because he loves me, I'm going to deliver him. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's the promise of the Lord. Amen. That is a promise of the Lord. If you love me, come on. I will deliver you. And so when you need the strength from the Lord, when you need the power from the Lord, when you need the deliverance from the Lord, you've got to understand that it starts by loving him. Mm -hmm. And what the enemy wants to trick you and deceive you into doing is to make you think that because you're in a place where you need to be delivered, you don't love the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he'll try to make you feel you walked away from the Lord. You had no business leaving the Lord. Had you never left the Lord, I'd have never been able to enter your heart. I'd have never been able to enter your mind. I wouldn't have been able to control you if you were following the leader of the Holy Spirit. You've got to allow the end. You've got to not allow the enemy to trick you in your mind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because if he can trick you in your mind, mm -hmm. he's going to trick you out of mm -hmm. your deliverance. Amen. Mm -hmm. He's going to trick you out of your relationship mm -hmm. with him, with, with the Lord. You cannot allow the enemy to trick you. And so go to Romans chapter 8. I'm going to close because I want to spend some time praying for you tonight. Romans 8 and 5, it says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal, the carnal mind is enmity or hatred against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. So then, right, there's a rule. Mm -hmm. They that are in the flesh cannot please God. Amen. And so you've got to realize that you can't be playing both sides of the fence. Come on, amen. He told, he told the church of Revelations 3, the church of Laodicea, you know what? I'm going to spew you out. Mm -hmm. Be hot or cold. Mm -hmm. Be a saint or a sinner. Mm -hmm. Be delivered or be captive. What are, what are you going to do? He's saying you choose it. Yeah. You choose it. But if you choose to be saved, if you choose to be delivered, then I got you. Mm -hmm. If you choose not, there's nothing I can do. So you've got to understand that you can't, the carnal mind. So when you need the strength of the Lord, and even though carnal times, we have carnal moments, and we fall, and we come short, even as believers and followers of Jesus, you've got to practice following the Lord. Yes. And so he says here that the carnal mind is enmity against God. And to be carnally minded is death. Mm -hmm. For they that are after the flesh, they mind the things of the flesh. And so when you sow, the Bible says, if you sow into the flesh, you will reap what? Corruption. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to look at and you've got to identify what you're doing in your life that is causing certain challenges to come upon you. Mm -hmm. And you've got to decide, I'm going to draw the line. Mm -hmm. And what side of the line am I going to stand on? Because I truly need the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. I truly need the strength of the Lord. I truly need the help of the Lord. And so I'm actually going to have to make a decision which side am I going to go on? They should sing this song. Whose side are you leaning on? Right. Leaning on I'm leaning on the Lord's side. Yes. Come on now. That's the conviction that you have to yes. have is that I'm leaning on the Lord's side. Yes. So this is what we have. I don't know how I got wherever I got well, to. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But this is what I want to leave you with. And I said this on Sunday. Is that the Lord is your refuge. Yes. It's a promise of the scripture. Thank you, Lord. So wherever you are in your walk, wherever you are in life, Periscope, Facebook, wherever you are, know that God is consistent. Yes, yes. He is willing to forgive you. Mm -hmm. He is willing to throw your sins into the sea of forgetfulness. Yes. And that God is willing to deliver you with your saved self. <laughs> Come on. Mm -hmm. I had a brother recently tell me you got saved from sin, mm -hmm. not from all the demons. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you got to deal with the demons even after your salvation. Yeah. That's true. Now, there's nothing in that text that I found that that man at the cemetery was saved, but he knew enough to go and worship Jesus. Mm -hmm. But he had legion, many demons in him. Mm -hmm. And I think it was like 2,000 pigs or something that ran off the side of the mountain. Mm -hmm. And so you got to understand that God wants you to be free. Mm -hmm. That God wants you to be delivered. And that he wants you to be whole. And whatever it is you're dealing with, I don't care if it's people, I don't care if it's a job, I don't care if it's a lawsuit, I don't care if it's your health, I don't care if it's evil spirits, I don't care if it's an addiction, I don't care if it's a person. Sometimes we get addicted to people. Mm -hmm. We don't know how to let people go. Sometimes you got to learn how to let people go. So I'm going to ask Lady British to come uh, and play. We're going to have a few moments of prayer. I just feel like I want to pray for you tonight. I'm going to take Amen. these. Uh, you all bring these things for me so I can pray. I want to see if you're on uh, Periscope or Facebook Live. You can leave it on there and um, just turn it. Um, I want to pray for you. That's fine. I want to pray for you if you have um, an actual request or something that you want to um, with or stand in agreement with you on tonight. We just want to pray with you in the room as I'm praying. If you want to just call it out, if you want to be bold, if you want to be courageous and you just want to call it out, if you want to slide it to me on a sheet of paper and you want to pray, I want to pray for you. I know we're going into a time uh, into Thanksgiving where sometimes just flip it back and turn it around. Sometimes people. Um, oh, sometimes people don't understand uh, a lot of things that happen or take place um, around Thanksgiving time. So sometimes, you know, the holidays bring on different feelings and emotions and spirits and such. And so um, uh, Lady British is going to play and we're going to pray. Amen. And if you're on Periscope, if you're on Facebook Live, if you have a prayer request, you can send that in. And we're going to pray uh, for about five minutes or so. Amen. But I just want to agree with you in prayer tonight. Because I believe that God wants to break some things in our lives. I believe that God wants to take us to a new place in him. I believe that God wants to free us and to deliver us from what he's going. Amen. Uh, amen. Sister, we see that. You want to pray for healing tonight. Amen. You're pressing your way. That's a sign of faith. That's an indicator to your sickness and to the devil that may be attacking you, that you have faith in the Lord. In the room, if you have anything, you can call them out. We're going to pray in Jesus' name. Come on, lift your hands and just begin to worship. If you're in a room, I want you to intercede for, for our friends that are here. I just want you to go into prayer. Begin to pray. Even for those that are in the room, I don't know if they feel the presence that we feel here, amen, via social media, but we're going to pray and we're going to believe in faith that God's going to do some things in your life, that God's going to change some things in your world because he's an amazing God, because he's an awesome God, and he does awesome things for his children. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Father, we give you glory, we give you praise, and we give you honor. Father, we worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we thank you because you are our healer. We thank you because you are our deliverer. We thank you, Father, because you hear us when 
we pray. We thank you, Father, that you are real and that you are the true and living God. We thank you, Father, for the faith that we have to know who you are. Father, we give you glory. Father, we give you honor. And Father, we give you praise. God, I give you worship today, O oh God. I give you honor today, O oh God, because you are an amazing God. I give you glory today, God, because you're concerned about your children. I give you glory today, God, because you move in the lives of your people. Father, we bless you and we worship you tonight night, oh God, because you're anointing and you are omnipresent, God. Father, I thank you for these on social media, God, who are all over the world. Father, we thank you that you are right where they are. Father, we come and we give you glory for every life, oh God, that is in this prayer. We come and we give you honor, oh God, for every soul, every heart that is a part of this prayer. Everyone in this room, everyone on social media audiences, God, God, we give you glory right now. Father, I come and I lift us all up to you, oh God. Father, there's a diversity of needs among us, oh God. Father, we all stand in a place of need. We stand many in a place of hurt. Many in a place needing healing, oh God. Father, we pray for healing tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray, God, that you would heal in the name of Jesus. Even as the woman wanted to come. And that she said that healing, oh God, that she would eat even the crumbs that would fall from the master's table. God, I pray for my sisters tonight. I pray for my brothers tonight, God. God, that you would heal them in the name of Jesus. God, it is your desire that we are whole. It is your desire that we are healed. It is your desire that we are delivered, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we come and we give you glory right now God. We thank you that healing is for your children. We thank you Lord God that whatever manner of sickness she's dealing with oh God. Whatever the setback has been in her life. We pray God that you would heal her now in the name of Jesus. Look on this daughter's back oh God. Lord touch her back in the name of Jesus. Lay your hand on her body now oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Look on this daughter's ankle. Look on her knee, oh God. Lord, touch right now in the name of Jesus. God, we pray, God, that you would heal, God, in the name of Jesus. Lay your hand on us, God, from the crown of our heads unto the soles of our feet, God. We need healing, oh God. Heal the minds of your people tonight, God. Heal the hearts of your people, oh God. Every broken heart that needs to be healed, God, in in the name of Jesus. There are those who are grieving God. Families in bereavement. God heal them. God give them strength. Give them power God. Give them an anointing God. To flow in this season God. To heal oh God. In Jesus' name, we pray for families today, oh God. I pray for every man, oh God. Every man in every household, God. I pray, oh God, that every husband will arise, oh God. And that you would give him an anointing, oh God. To be the husband that you ordained him to be, God. That every father, oh God, will arise with the fresh anointing, God. To be the father that you have called them to be, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Father, every man that needs a job, I pray in Jesus' name, God, that you would guide them to the place of employment, God. That you would guide them, oh God, to the place of gainful employment, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Help today, oh God, and we will be helped. Heal today, oh God, and we will be healed. In the name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, for every barren woman, God. I pray, oh God, that the wombs, God, of your daughters that are barren, oh God, will be open in this season, oh God, with their husbands 
husbands, oh God, that they will know each other, oh God, and that you would give life in the name of Jesus. I pray for mothers who are with child tonight, God. I pray for healthy, full-term pregnancies, God, in the name of Jesus. I come against the spirit of abortion in the name of Jesus, that the child will be born, God, and that the child will be anointed, God, even as you anointed Samuel, God, to be a prophet to your children, God. Anoint the children in utero, God, in the name of Jesus, that there will be no birth defects, that there will be no premature births, that there will be no miscarriages, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you glory. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. Pray against addictions tonight. We have sons and we have daughters. We have mothers. We have fathers that are dealing with addictions, God. Addictions to ungodly things. Addictions to people. Addictions to drugs, to alcohol. Father, I pray. In the name of Jesus, God, that you would touch the hearts of your people. That you would touch the hearts of your people, God. That you would deliver your sons and your daughters, oh God. God, that you would help them to confront, to confront their addictions, oh God. Help them, oh God, to confront their matters, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Heal and we'll be healed, God. Deliver and we will be delivered, God. In in the name of Jesus, I come against depression in this season, oh God. Be lifted up, lift up your heads, oh ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, people of God, be strengthened tonight, be encouraged tonight. Know that the Lord fights for you. The Lord is fighting for you. And he fights with the right hand. That the hand of the Lord is upon your life. I want you to know that there is an anointing that God wants to release upon your life. And you need to line yourself up with the will of God for your life. Whatever the will of the Lord is for your life, you need to align yourself with the will of the Lord for your life. For some of us, that means stop running. It means stop hiding. It means to stop ducking and dodging the plan of the Lord for your life. Some of the things aren't coming to pass the way you think they are because you're not doing what God has anointed you to do. You're not doing what God has called you to do. But I press and I put a pressure. I put a call. I put a demand on the anointing. I put a demand on every gift. I put a demand on every calling that is in your life. And I put a demand and I call it forth in the name of of Jesus that you would release yourself hallelujah to the things of the Lord in Jesus name there's a set time there's a set time and for some of us that set time is now but you've got to move in the set time of God hear what I'm telling you there's a set time if you don't flow in the set time of God you will miss the timing of the Lord for your life You've been praying. You've been crying. You've been seeking the Lord for some things. There are some things that the Lord is saying to you. This is your set time. But you're out of alignment. You've got to align yourself with the time and with the season of God. Hallelujah. 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 Saul was out of alignment. He was out of alignment. Jesus had to take him. And he had to confront Saul. He had to blind him for three days. And he had to challenge another man of God. To go to where Saul was. And lay hands upon him. So that he could be released. Hallelujah. Jesus. Mm wants to release you. 
He wants to release you into what he's calling you to do. You have a purpose. I want to tell you right here, right now, that you have a purpose. In this room, point to somebody and tell them you have a purpose. Tell them, say, you have a purpose. You have a purpose. There is an anointing on your life. There is a God assignment for your life. You don't have to live beneath the privilege of the Lord in your life. There is a fresh anointing reserved for your life. And that if you're alive in this season, God has a work for you. And we give God glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give God glory. We give God glory. There is an awakening. Hallelujah. In your life. There is an awakening. That God is awakening something in you. That he is shaking in some of you the very foundation of what you've been living on. The very foundation of how you've been living. God's shaking your foundation. He's waking up something in you so that you can become everything that God has designed for you. Allow God to awaken his anointing in you. There's a warrior in you. There's a prophet in you. There's a teacher in you. There's a balance in you. There's a prayer in you. There's an intercessor in you. There's a fighter in you. You got God's got deliverance on your life. God's got healing on your life. You've got to allow the Spirit of God to awaken you in this season. Don't miss the set time of the Lord. Don't miss the set time of the Lord. Don't miss the set time of the Lord in your life. Life. This is your season. This is your time to go to the next realm in God. It's your season. Hallelujah. It's your season. It's your day. It's your time. It's your time. It's your time. You got to surrender. You've got to surrender. You've got to tell the Lord yes. You've got to tell him yes. Some of the things you've been wrestling with. God says, the more you release to me, the less you will wrestle with them. The more you give to me, the less you have to deal with them. And that's the place you want to be in. Father, I pray in Jesus' name. I pray God that you would release God an anointing that will break God and that you would release God an anointing that will allow your sons and your daughters to release the people to release the issues to release themselves to detach themselves we pray for the breakers anointing God that you would break every chain that you would break every fetter that has had them bound we pray for the breakers anointing God that you would break hallelujah destroy yokes God destroy yokes God ungodly soul ties to people ungodly soul ties to passions ungodly soul ties to talents God Give us balance tonight, God. Hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God. Glory. 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 I just want you to start giving Him glory. Wherever you are, I just want you to open your mouth and just begin to give Him glory. Come and open your mouth and just begin to bless the name of God. I don't care if you're in your car. I don't care if you're in your house. I don't care if there are people around you. Open your mouth and begin to glorify your God. Because he's releasing an anointing. Hallelujah. 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 Halleluj
Hallelujah. 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 We receive it, God. 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 And we give you praise. We give you glory. They say, God is able. God is able. He's able to do exceeding, abundantly, above all you could ask or think, according to the power that's working in you. There's a power that has to be at work in you so that you can see the exceeding and the abundance of God in your life. But you've got to surrender yourself. You've got to submit to the power of God in your life. You've got to submit. You've got to surrender to the anointing of God when it is flowing on your life. So God, we give you thanks. We give you praise. And we give you glory. We magnify you. And we bless your name. We thank you for the work and the release. We thank you for the breaking. We thank you for the fresh anointing. We thank you for the yokes that are destroyed by your anointing. In Jesus name we give him praise and we give him glory. Hallelujah. 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 You want to sow tonight. I encourage you to sow and to the presence of God. You can give on the Spoken Word app. You can sow, you can text it to 708-265-3303. 708-265-3303. But you want to bless the Lord tonight. I want you to start giving God thanks. I want you to just start praising Him and glorifying Him and magnifying Him. And I decree to you tonight that as you begin to give God glory, things are going to happen in your life. God's getting ready to open doors. This is a season that God's awakening things in His people. And if you go with the flow of God, you're going to see some amazing things take place in your life. Believe me what I'm telling you. As you begin to release yourself to the things of the Lord, you're getting ready to see the amazingness of God in your life. We're well beyond our time tonight. They haven't kicked us out yet. We're going to go from this place, but I want you to have that in your spirit. I want you to have that in your heart that I've got to give more to the Lord. Amen. Yes, everyone have a blessed Thanksgiving. Enjoy your family. Don't overeat. Don't eat too much of the wrong things. Our pastor, our former pastor used to say, if you got high blood pressure, leave the chitlins alone. Eat one or two and keep on moving. Enjoy your families. Pray with your families while you're together. Somebody be bold enough. Be courageous enough. God bless you, Pastor Dawson. Blessings upon you and your family as well. Be courageous enough with your families at Thanksgiving to have prayer. Just get everybody together for prayer on Thanksgiving. Get them and pray for them. Ask the Lord to give you a word for your family this Thanksgiving season. And when you hold hands and pray, release a word over them. Now, if everybody at your family is not saved, don't give them a revival over grace. But when there's a time to pray, pray for your family. Release and pronounce blessings upon your family. Sow into your family more than cakes, cookies, pies, and turkey on Thanksgiving. Sow life into your family. In Jesus' name. Listen, we love you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for logging on, swiping, sharing, whatever it is you did tonight. I just want to leave you with the presence of the Lord. I almost don't want to leave this place. Amen. But I thank God for his power. And I thank God for his presence. And I thank God for each one of you. Amen. Go in the strength of the Lord. Father, as we leave this place, but never from your presence, keep us looking to you by faith. We thank you for what you've done, for what you're doing, and for what you're going to do in the lives of your sons and daughters in this season. We give you honor. We pray for our nation. We give America to you. 
and we receive your direction on how to live in America. And we thank you for our brothers and our sisters and for what you're going to do. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pronounce upon you peace and favor in Jesus' name. You have a blessed night as well. God bless all of you. We love you with the love of the Lord. Be free, be whole, be healed, be delivered, and be filled with the presence of God. Amen. God bless you is our prayer. Have a good night.